Hey guys, we are at the five minute warning, five minute warning. We'll get started here shortly with the KW Consumer App training. So five minute warning. If you're not already, grab your laptop, get on Zoom, have your phone ready. We're gonna walk through the KW Consumer App on your phone together as a group. Look forward to seeing you here live in about five more minutes, guys. All right, guys, happy Monday. Glad to have you guys here. So my name is Marty Miller. I am your South Texas Regional Technology Trainer for those that I have not met. 
Uh, I've been with Keller Williams for about six years now. I live in Katy, Texas, so not too far away from you guys. I actually grew up in Sugar Land, went to Kempner High School, for those of you that have been in Sugar Land for a while and know where the high school is there. Uh, but happily married to my wife, Nicole. We have twin five-year-olds, and we're expecting girl number three in August. August 19th, little Lily May will be delivered, so excited about that. Um, as far as KW goes, like I said, six years. I started off as an independent agent, quickly joined a team. I have served in the role of buyer's agent, listing agent. I became uh, an expansion agent when we opened our second office. I became the VP of sales for our team, and then ultimately the president of the mega team that I was serving on when our mega agent stepped out to do commercial projects. So uh, see Tim Sell, if you've ever done any work with Tim Soika or the team, that's the team that I'm talking about. Uh, we were a top 15 team here in the Houston area uh, during those four years. So great experience working with Tim and the team. I uh, got to follow a passion for coaching and training uh, after that, where I became a productivity coach on the Northwest side uh, at the Cypress office, Platinum. Uh, Randy Olive, Karina Loken, my TL and OP did that for about 14 months and then uh, was uh, blessed enough to have the, uh, the opportunity to move into this role of regional technology trainer as of the first of the year. So wish I could be there with you. Uh, unfortunately not given the circumstances of today and yet uh, hopefully by Q3 maybe things will settle down a little bit more and we can see each other then. But that being said, this is a Zoom webinar in case you have not been on a Zoom webinar before. Don't worry, you are automatically muted. So I cannot hear you, nor can I hear your dogs barking in the background or your kids asking for another glass of milk. I cannot see you either, so don't worry. Um, if there's chaos happening in your background, no big deal, no one can see your cameras either. So that's me or any other participant. Uh, so that's the Zoom webinar style of format. Uh, if you look down at the bottom of your screen though, there are a few buttons that you may not have noticed before. Uh, you do have a chat button, you should have a Q&A button, and you should have the ability to raise your hand. Um, if at any point you want to have a discussion about KW, KW Consumer App, and your questions regarding the subject matter that we're talking about, feel free to raise your hand. I can go ahead and unmute you at that point, and then we can have a discussion from there. Uh, Namesh, I've got you as a panelist so that you can unmute yourself when you're ready. Uh, you've done this before, so we'll have some questions for you. You can interact with us as well. So. Uh, question was, will this be recorded or will it be on YouTube? Uh, this is being recorded and I will have a link uh, to this recording no later than tomorrow sent to your leadership team so they can send that out to you guys so you can rewatch the video should you choose to. Or if there's people on your team or colleagues that you know couldn't make the class, uh, you can send that to them as well and that way they can watch the class together. So um without further ado let's go ahead and get started uh first things first namesh i have a question for you sir what kind of app is it we are talking about the kw what a consumer app oh i'm sorry your voice is a little soft there the consumer app there it is it's a consumer app guys consumer app so Let's put that to rest. First off, uh, this is a KW consumer app. I've had a lot of questions where people have said, uh, well, hey, um, how come I can't do this? How come I can't do that? As an agent, I should be able to do this. Guys, this app was created and built for the consumer. So we're gonna talk in the kind of last one third of the class about some things that we can do within KW Command that will impact the consumer app. However, let's just remember that this is a KW consumer app. So. Let's dive right in. I'm gonna actually share that app with you on my phone and we will walk through it together. And let me pull that up for you guys. If you have not already, I do want you to go to the App Store, whether that's Google Play or the Apple App Store and download the KW Realty app. Um, it'll look like this, top left corner, white background, red letters, and it says KW. When you go to download that app, if it's the first time that you are downloading it, then you need to make sure that you are registering for the app just as any other consumer would, meaning that you're going to have to create an account. The consumer app does not recognize you as a KW agent from your best friend who is not a KW agent. The consumer app assumes that both of you are consumers and so therefore you need to create an account just like he or she would. So you'll create a username, you'll create a password, you will log in and you will then be on the consumer app as a consumer, okay? From there, you're going to want to brand your app, the one you just downloaded, to yourself. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner of the app, you're gonna see a button that says more. If for any reason that button still says you, Y-O-U, you need to update your consumer app. 
Okay, so if you downloaded it previously but haven't done an update, there's a possibility that button still says you. That was from the first version of the app. Uh, the new version now you can see says more. So make sure you've got the most updated version there. When you click on more, if your app has been branded to an agent, you will clearly see the name and photo of that agent on the screen. So you can see my app has been branded to me as the agent, and you can see that my name, license number, and photo are at the top of the screen. If for any reason your app has not been branded to yourself or someone, you know, if you're working with someone and they have a version of your app that's not branded to you, it'll look like this on the screen. You can see it now says find a Keller Williams agent, right? If you're downloading it for the first time, you're going to want to find yourself. Uh, if you are working with a consumer, right, and they for some reason receive an unbranded version, they are going to want to find you. So I can find an agent by typing in their name, but if I don't know any actual agents in Sugarland, I could actually come in and type in Sugarland. And obviously, I know you guys service that entire surrounding area, Richmond, Rosenberg, uh, Missouri City, et cetera. But let's just look at Sugarland. And you can see here are a list of agents, right, that all are working the Sugarland area. Okay, so you can kind of see as we go through here. Now, let's just stop right about here. Of the six agents that are listed on this screen, all amazing agents, by the way, as you probably know, which two of these six are you most likely going to want to do business with? You can throw it in the chat there, all right? All yeah, six amazing agents, most likely all in your market center. And yet of the six listed on the screen, put in the chat, I want you to type in the names of the two agents you're most likely going to want to do business with. There we go, right? So Angelia, Jessica, Avalon, or Cheryl, uh, all saying the same thing, right? Yes, it is most likely the ones that have a profile photo. The consumer wants to make a connection with you as an agent. And the first thing they look to connect with is who is this person, right? And can I make a connection with them through their actual profile photo? There, if you don't have a profile photo, guys, you're doing yourself a disservice. So homework item number one, if you have not already, was to go download the app, okay? And we're gonna brand it to you. Homework item number two is to go to, into the command marketing profile and your connect marketing profile. Make sure both of those are completely filled out so that you have your headshot, your, special, your uh, address, your team name, your profile, your bio, you're gonna see, let's just say, I don't know if Erica just filled out, but we're gonna choose Erica. And there you go, you can see she's got her website, she's got her address of the market center there, her license number, her email address, and then you've got a very basic profile here. Now this is the actual profile that the Connect profile defaults to, and yet at least she has something in here, she's connected it. Okay, we can choose Alex, let's just see. So it looks like Alex has a team, so you can see the name of his team there, his team logo, um, and then he's also got a full bio there about himself as well, right? If you are looking to brand this app to yourself, you would just click in that top box and you would search for your name. You'll find yourself as an agent and then you would select yourself. So you can therefore, you can see my bio here, all my information. And then you do have to click on the button at the bottom that says get in touch. Okay, once you click on get in touch, it'll say confirm that you want to designate Marty Miller as your new agent. Yours would say designate you. And then you'll see success. So Marty is now your agent. They'll help you find the right home or sell your current one. You can connect them with them at any time in the app. So that's what you're looking for. This is the screen you want to get to to make sure that your app has been branded to you or the app that your consumer is using has been branded to you. You can now see my name and headshot back at the top of the screen. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we are putting in our marketing information into KW Command or KW Connect so that your profile information is then showing up. So you've got your headshot, obviously your name, your team name, your information, all that type of stuff. Okay, so homework item number one, Download the app, brand it to yourself. Homework item number two, go into Command and Connect and fill out your profiles so you have all of that information. All right, next we're gonna start working through how a consumer would search for a house. How a consumer would search for a house. Guys, there's a lot of things right now where we're gonna take our agent cap off 
we're going to put our consumer hat on. And yet in the back of your mind, I want you to be thinking about my consumer most likely already has a real estate app on their phone, right? They are most likely already using a real estate app. Now, whether that's HAR, whether it's Zillow, whether it's Redfin, you know, there's a variety of them out there. Why would they want to use ours over those? Okay, so we're going to start talking about things that you can do within our consumer app that you cannot do in a lot of those other apps, right? The first thing is we're going to start in that bottom left-hand corner where you have the magnifying glass and we're going to click on search. Uh, Namesh, last time you went on vacation in the U.S., where did you go? What did you go see? What did you go do? The last time, uh, I believe that was Florida. Where'd you go? Uh, Orlando. Orlando, what'd you do? Take a wild guess. Was it Disney World? It was. So if you loved Disney World, you, you said, sense you know the enthusiasm in my voice? Yeah, right? Been there and done that and the enthusiasm <laughs> was the same level. Let's say you wanted to buy a house near Disney World. Do you know the address of Disney World by chance? I do not know the address, but I do know, I believe it's Lake Buena Vista, Florida though. Hmm. But what if I didn't even know that and I just wanted to search for ah, yeah, you're right. Disney World. That looks like Disney World right there. It sure does. There's Epcot Center Drive, so I believe it probably is. Right. Where else? Disney World. If you could go anywhere in the U.S., you wanted to see like a, I don't know, a landmark or a park or a, a, something fun. Where would you go? What's your next? Uh, let's see. Um what man why can't i think yosemite yosemite you're a man after my own heart that's where my wife and i actually celebrated our anniversary nice our uh, our uh, honeymoon excuse me so i could say yosemite national park and boom now i'm taken into the middle of yosemite national park obviously it's a it's really big houses. park right <laughs> not a lot of houses inside the park and yet as we start to zoom out we can see houses around yosemite national park Let's say we're not a fan of Florida, but we love California and we want to go to Disneyland instead. Boom, there's Disneyland Drive and houses located around Disneyland. Let's just say maybe we wanted to go, I don't know, let's not get too political, but if we wanted to live near the White House, there's White House and you can see the homes that are listed around the White House. So now we're on a patriotic train, let's say Statue of Liberty. Boom, now I'm taken immediately to the Statue of Liberty and I can see the homes around there. What if it was, I'm a wine guy. I love going to Napa Valley. Silver Oak Winery is one of my favorites. Whoops, oh, close enough, right? Silver Oak Winery and still gonna pull up the same exact location. So here's one of the cool things that you can do within our app, guys, is you can actually search for landmark area. Cheryl says Arches Park. Cheryl, what state is that in? I'm going to give it. Arches, I think, is in um, is that Utah or Arizona. I can't remember. I'm going to put in Arches Park and just see what it comes up with. Let's see if this is it, Cheryl. Is this Arches Park? I'm not even sure Arches what city or state this is in, but I believe in command. Is it in, where, where are we? Are we in Wyoming? Where are we? Utah? No, see, I think it is Utah. See, it's Cheryl, you took us all the way to Utah? Yeah, like sounds it. right. <laughs> right? And yet, there it is, Utah. So as you zoom all the way out, you can see that we're in Utah. All I searched for, for was Arches Park. And now you can see it brought up one of the national parks there in Utah. So here's one of the cool things, guys. Try and search for any one of those search characteristics I just gave you in any one of those other apps. Right? It's not, it is looking for addresses. Our consumer app has a partnership with Google and when you search in that search box at the top, if you're not specific, searching for a specific address, it's gonna look for, okay, what is the most likely address that we have associated with what we just put in? So for example, we put in Arches Park, Utah, right? We didn't even put Utah, but Google said, okay, out of all the Arches Park, what's most likely the one they're searching for? The most common known one is the National Park in Utah, and therefore we'll zoom in on that screen. So that's just one more thing that they can do is say, hey, I've always wanted to live near and then whatever, right? Wherever they've actually visited, but they don't know the address. We didn't know the specific address for Disneyland or Silver Oak or Disney World or the White House or Statue of Liberty. And yet, because we put in each one of those locations, it zoomed us in on that specific address. 
and then showed us homes for sale around. So that's what we call a landmark search, and that's made possible because, and you can even see it at the bottom of the screen there, our partnership with Google utilizing our KW Consumer app. Next, uh, you guys give me, give me a neighborhood there in the Sugarland, Richmond, Missouri City area, popular neighborhood. Um, Riverstone is popular. Riverstone is a popular neighborhood. So I'm gonna put it in Riverstone. Right, and look what happens down there at the bottom. I'm going to start getting locations. I'm going to start getting neighborhoods. Let's just do a search. All right, I just put in Riverstone and it zoomed in. Right, and is this Riverstone right here? It is. It is. Off yeah. of Commonwealth University. Boulevard? Yeah. yeah, off a of university, so a little lower. Yeah, right there. there. There's Riverstone. Mm -hmm. So I can actually zoom in and you'll see that the neighborhoods start popping up. Right, so there's Riverstone, Silver Grove at Riverstone, Waterside at Riverstone. I'm guessing this is going to end up being Siena down below. Yeah, you're right. Right, so you can see that that's another thing that we can search for is actual neighborhood names. So if I don't know any addresses, but I've just heard, hey, if you want to move to the Sugarland, Missouri City area, Riverstone's a really nice neighborhood to be in. Boom. Quick and easy, all I search for is Riverstone and it zooms me in on the Riverstone neighborhood. And now I can start to see properties that are for sale in that neighborhood. So that's just one example, but you could use, right? And Katy Cinco Ranch is probably the most known neighborhood. You could come in here and just search for Cinco Ranch. And there you'll see, it's gonna zoom right in on Cinco Ranch as a neighborhood. And I can zoom in and start to see there's Beach Club, Fountain View, Cinco Forest, Summer Point, then we cross over and we get into Grand Lakes, et cetera. So I can actually click, so let's just go back to River Point. Oops, not Rover there. And I can actually click on the neighborhood. Whoops, it's two words, isn't it? Are you talking about Riverstone? Riverstone, I'm sorry. That's, okay. That's it. Sorry, guys, there we go. So as I zoom in, I'm getting the neighborhood data to pull up. I can actually click where it says white there, Riverstone, and immediately get information about the neighborhood. I haven't even looked at any of the houses, but I just want to understand, okay, so tell me a little bit more about Riverstone. Why does everyone say it's so nice? Well, I can see the average days on market, it's 83 days. The average home price, 625,000, starts to explain a little bit. Uh, the average home price per square foot, $148, All right? You can see information there about what locals say. That's all driven by a company called Spatial.ai, and it's based upon a variety of things. Uh, typically, a lot of that information is driven by local purchases. Uh, obviously, anytime you shop with a, um, a loyalty card or a debit or credit card, they can track that back to your actual address. And so it looks like there's a lot of people either buying healthy foods or fitness gear, or it looks like they drink a lot of coffee there in Riverstone as well. So uh, you can see commute times. I'm gonna show you the ability to actually put in specific locations, and then you can tell, not only from the neighborhood, but then also from actual listings, how long the drive is going to be. Denise, I actually clicked on the name of the Riverstone neighborhood when I was on the map. Next, we can look at the nearby schools and their statewide rankings. How often do we hear, don't be the source of the information, be the source of the source of the information? Well, here's a quick and easy way to see what's happening in the local schools. My guess is, I haven't been in Riverstone for a long time. I used to live in Siena. <clears throat> but my guess is that Sullivan is a brand new elementary school, or it's probably at least within its first year or two. And that's yeah, the A couple of years, I believe. Yeah. What's that? Couple of years, I believe. Couple of years. So they're still yeah. waiting for those scores to actually make it all the way up to the statewide ranking and then be pushed back out. But you can see obviously for settlement, 100%. That's a really well rated middle school. It's the first time I've ever seen 100. Uh, Elkins High School. Number one in Fort Bend ISD. Go ahead. I think it's the number one in Fort Bend ISD. That's there you go. Yeah, and definitely for a reason, right? So if there were any private schools, you would also have a few private schools listed close by to the neighborhood. Then as we continue to scroll, you can see we also not only have a partnership with Google, but we have a partnership within the app with Yelp. So you can see right now there are five, uh, excuse me, uh, restaurants nearby the Riverstone neighborhood. 
and I can see V Lotus, uh, Brand Daniels, one of my favorites. I used to go there all the time in Siena, uh, when I was in Siena. Uh, Republic Roots, we've got Texas Beer Garden, Keepers, uh, Brand Daniels Burgers. So you can see, right, the consumer has the ability to say, hey, I don't like to cook that much. So I got to make sure my neighborhood is near some decent restaurants. Well, they can actually pull up if there's any restaurants. You can also see grocery, nightlife, cafes, shopping, arts and entertainment, or fitness are all different categories that would pop up if there were any of those near that actual address. Finally, at the bottom, you can see 10 homes that are listed for sale, all there within the Riverstone neighborhood as well. I got that information merely by clicking on the name of the neighborhood. So you can see if I clicked on Silver Grove at Riverstone, I would get a different set of information, right? Now it's probably relatively similar, <clears throat> and yet you can kind of go through each one of these neighborhoods and kind of get at a snapshot what's happening in that neighborhood. What's the difference between these two and these three or this one across the way or whatever it may be. So we've talked about searching by landmark. We've talked about searching by neighborhood. Next, I can actually just search for an actual home, just the good old fashioned way, using filters that you can see at the top of the screen there. So let's just say I'm looking for a house somewhere between, I don't know, let's go 350 and 500. And I'm gonna click on done. So these two white dots, basically I just put my finger on the dot and I slid it to the left. I put my finger on the other dot, slid it to the right. I got a price range from 350 to 500. Next, I can click on bedrooms. Told you guys I have three daughters here very soon. Got to have at least four bedrooms. And I'll click on done again. I'm going to click on property type. It's got to be a single family home. We have two dogs, need a backyard as well. I'll click on done one more time. Then you'll see there's the more button on that same row, top right hand corner. So if I click on more, I can add some additional filters as I start to scroll down. Now, listing type will default to for sale. And then if you click on it, you will see active. So it defaults to active listings that are for sale. However, you can use our app to look for lease properties as well. You'll see underneath the for sale box is a toggle for for rent. If I toggle that on, now I'm looking at lease properties instead of properties for sale. I can go back to the for sale toggle and you can see there are several other options there as well. Now I will say that the KWLS team is working with all of the MLSs across the nation to make sure that they are um, feeding in each one of these property sources. So for example, I can tell you as of last week, HAR was not feeding in to our app, the foreclosure button, um, and it was not feeding in, I believe, the new construction. So they're working on it, and you gotta imagine, <clears throat> I believe there's something like 1,400 MLSs across the nation. Um, so every time one of them changes something or does something slightly different, we've got to make sure it gets updated into our app. And rarely do they tell us, unfortunately, if we're changing something. Uh, let's look at bathrooms. Uh, I got to have at least three plus bathrooms. Uh, living area, let's just say the quarantine has been fun in 2,600. Let's shoot for 3,000 or more this time around. And um, I don't want to clean a whole lot of house though. So let's just say max is 4,000. So we'll do three to 4,000. And now you can see I've created a filter of criteria that I'm looking for in the purchase of a home. If I keep scrolling down, you can see some additional ones there. If I click on done, and I've got to click on price one more time. Unfortunately, it did not save that price. So let's go back up to 300 to 450. And I'll click done one more time. And now on the screen, you can see here are about eight or nine different properties, right? that match the criteria that I am looking for. Now, let's just say I wanted to make sure that I was closer to, what is that, 59, I think? Closer to 59. So I'll say, hey, I wanna be south of 59. I can actually click on the draw finger. And then I can say, I wanna be in this little pocket right here. I don't wanna go down south and there we go. And I'm literally just tracing on the screen the area that I want to be in. And you can now see the homes that were outside of that area have disappeared. So now I have just the homes that match the pricing kit criteria, bedroom and bathroom criteria, square footage. They're all single family homes and they're all in that blue area. Now that took me a while. That probably took me five minutes, right? To go through and put all that criteria in. 
Now, if I close out the app and come back in, that whole search will be lost and I would have to do it every single time that I came back to the app. Or I could actually save this as one of my custom searches. So in the top right hand corner, you'll see there's a ribbon that says save. Uh, Linda, I clicked on the finger icon just below the save ribbon and that's how you draw. And then if you click on the ribbon at the top where it says save, I can actually say this is Riverstone and I might even put um, south of 59. And I'm gonna save that search. So now anytime I want to reference this search again, guys, and remember, we have a lot of people that are just like, nah, maybe one day, right? I have a one day plan to live on the shores of Lake Travis. Like I wanna live on the water. Lake Travis has always been a lake that I've really enjoyed in Austin, but that's like a 10 to 15 year goal. Are there some days where I'm just daydreaming and I look at property values in Lake Travis just to see how far I have to go before I can live there? Sure, right? I could even set up a search in Lake Travis personally for myself. So the consumer can do the same thing. It doesn't have to be, I'm looking to buy a house this month and so I'm gonna set up a search. They can see their saved searches. At the very bottom there, there's a heart icon. You can click on that heart icon and now you can see at the bottom there, recent saved searches. And the first one that shows up is Riverstone. Let's just say I was in search. I was looking around. I was saying, well, I've heard Cinco's nice. And maybe there's this Meadow Place area. And then there's a few neighborhoods over here. And then, you know what? Actually, I think Riverstone's the one. But now all of a sudden, my map's all jacked up. I've got properties showing everywhere. I'm like, I just want to go back to that little pocket south of 59 in Riverstone that I really liked. I can, again, go back to saved. I can click on that search and immediately I'm taken right back to that pocket that I drew with the same criteria that I entered the first time that I built out that search. And they can build out multiple saved searches. You can see just as an example, when I click on view all next to recent saved searches, obviously I've taught this class multiple times and these are all of the searches that I have saved as I've taught the class. So right now I haven't had a cap yet. I'm probably looking at a dozen or so saved searches that I've built out. Anytime I could click on any one of these, let's just say here's the Fawn Lake one. Now it's gonna take me in, right? Now all of a sudden I'm not in Riverstone anymore. Now I'm in Fawn Lake in the heart of Katy. I can go back to save and say, nope, wrong one. Let me go back to that uh, Riverstone search. And there I am back to my Riverstone search. You don't have to have the finger drawn on there either, right? So it could just be, hey, I just want to look for anything in Sugarland, anything in, right? So certain areas that were on my map that I want to look at. Next, let's look at an actual property. So we're going to click on this one right in the middle, 330,000, 4902 uh, Cypress Spring Drive. I can click on the photo at the top and drag my finger towards the top of the screen, and you can see it then maximizes the listing information, right? 330,000 at the very top, I've got 35 photos that have been loaded. I can swipe to the left and start looking through each one of the photos of this property. Just below there, you can see that there is a price and there's been a right recent price decrease. So you can see that squiggly arrow pointing down with 15K, that means that recently the price of this home was decreased $15,000. I can easily see that's a four bedroom, three and a half bathroom home. 3,300 square feet, all right? Lynn, I totally understand, and yet that's one of the reasons why we're also recording this, so we'll send the recording back out to you guys. I know you're wanting to like follow along with every single step. Um, that's the reason why I record it, so you can kind of figure out which portion you wanna follow along later on. Um, but if I went at a, at a pace that was slow enough for everyone to follow along, absolutely, we'd be here for about three hours. So I promise I'll send the recording back out to you guys so you can check that out. Um, next, you've got the address of the property, which you can see pretty easily there. And then you've got a toolbar right in the middle of the screen that says save, hide, or share. Save, a property that I want to save, right, and keep because I want to see it again. I can click on save, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to save this to a collection? Collections, basically, think about that as a grouping of properties that I really like and want to access again in the future. By default, and you'll probably see it if you are following along with us, there's a favorites that is automatically gonna show up on the consumer app, okay? Defaults to Marty's favorites. Now, if I already had a collection that I wanted to add this to, 
I could just click on one of these collections. If not, if this was the first time and I want to create a collection of Riverstone homes, I could click on the very bottom there where it says create new collection and then actually type in Riverstone. And then I'm going to click on the little dot next to Riverstone and then click on save. This particular property was just saved, you can see at the bottom of the screen, in a collection called Riverstone. If I click on the arrow at the top left hand corner, the down arrow, I can minimize that listing. I'm going to drag it down to the bottom of the screen so I can see my toolbar at the bottom. First thing you'll notice, there's a little heart next to that listing that's showing on the screen. That's one that I have favorited. Just like we had saved searches, we also now have saved collections. So if I click on that heart at the bottom right corner again one more time, you can see instead of saved searches, I also now have recent collections, and there's my Riverstone collection. If I click on it, you'll see there's the one property that I have loaded into that collection. As I continue to kind of peruse and shop and look at different listings, anything else that I wanted to, I could click on the heart and then choose the Riverstone collection again, and it would keep showing up in this collection. So eventually I could just scroll up and see one, two, 10, 15 different properties that I have added to the collection. Now, obviously the most often use case is a neighborhood, right? Like I'm looking in Riverstone, I'm looking in Cinco Ranch, I'm looking in, um, you know, Greatwood, whatever it may be. However, the consumer can also create any collection that they want. Maybe it's uh, beautiful kitchens because they know that, you know, their one year plan is to do a kitchen remodel. Maybe it's amazing pools or amazing backyards or uh, amazing curb appeal. Anything along those lines, they can create a collection for whatever they want. They can name it whatever they want and they can add whatever properties they want to that collection. So when you're kind of discussing this with your consumer, you can tell them, look, sometimes you're gonna see homes that you like that might not be in a neighborhood you wanna live in, but you could still save that home to a collection and that way I'll kind of get an idea of what you're looking for so I can help you find that kind of a home in a particular neighborhood that we're searching for. So any kind of collect collection titled however they want to title it with as many properties as they want to add to that collection. Let's go back to the map by clicking on search in that bottom left hand corner. I'm taken back into my search criteria that I had set up earlier. Now let's click on that one that's 425 in the bottom right hand corner. And click on that listing and I'm going to drag it up and immediately I can look at this house. It looks like a beautiful house, but I can tell you already my wife does not like white brick. This is not a house that we would move to. So I could easily click on the hide button right in the middle where it says hide. And you'll see the eye now turned red. I joke that I got bloodshot, right? So you can now see that the hide button is lit up. Watch what happens when we go back to the map. I'm going to click on that down arrow in the top left hand corner underneath what time it is and drag that down. Now you can see that listing grays out. And as soon as I move the map away from it and come back, that listing is now gone. So if you have a particular consumer that is looking for homes in an area and they're like, and you know how it is, because guys, we've all been there and you're like, Oh, nothing new. I've already seen all of these properties. Well, if there's properties in that area that don't match what they're looking for, then tell them they can hide them and they won't show up on the map any further. If for any reason they actually hid something that they didn't mean to, they can click on the more button at the very top right hand corner and they can scroll to the very bottom of the menu. We've been on this earlier. And I can show hidden listings. That last item, there's a toggle. I can click on show hidden listings and then click on done in the top right hand corner. And now you can see there's that listing I hid. It's grayed out and I can still see it on the map. Okay, if for any reason I'm like, I didn't mean to do that, I can click on the listing again. It's gonna pop up. I'm gonna drag it towards the top so I can see the entire listing. And I'm gonna click on the hide button one more time and now the listing is no longer hidden. So that's how you can hide it, and then that's how you can unhide it. Again, it's the more button, top right hand corner, scroll to the bottom of your filters, and then click on show hidden listings, it'll pop back up for them. 
If I want to share this listing, perhaps I'm looking for a house with a business partner or a life partner or my wife or my husband or my brother, my mom, my best friend, whatever, and I want to share a particular listing, I can click on the share button as well. And then you can see I can directly text that to someone or I can send it via text, email, Facebook, Slack, Discord, whatever messaging programs you have saved on your phone, all different ways to send it. Now, just so you know, for example, let me see, it is not, they are not required. So the person that you are sharing the app with is not required to have the consumer app. This is actually a URL for a website, meaning that if you text this to someone and they click on it on their phone, then Safari or Chrome or whatever their default browser on their phone is, is going to show up and it's going to actually be a single property listing page so that they can then see the information. So it's not, you're not actually sharing the app when you share a property from the app. There is a button for the consumer to share the app and I'll show you how to do that in just a few moments. Um, but just a heads up, if you're sharing properties from within the app, you're really just sharing a single landing page. Underneath the three buttons there for save, hide and share, you can see you've got opportunities for Keller Mortgage and Keller Cover to be covered, to be included in the app. Um, I think this is a great tool personally because oftentimes when I was working with buyers, I did my best to tell them about Keller Covered and sometimes I would forget, right? I would hate for my client to find out that I had access to Keller Covered as a Keller Williams agent and did not share that access with my, my buyers. So it's kind of the great CYA just in case for some reason I forgot, they can find out more about Keller Covered and Keller Mortgage directly from the app. They can click on either one of those two and be taken directly to those sites. So automatically included on your app there. Next, you can see the description of the property. And this is pulled from the MLS. I don't know if you're doing this, please don't be the all caps person. It just annoys me. Namesh or in the chat, someone tell me who the listing agent is on this property. Who is the listing agent? We'll give a chance in the chat first. All right, the mesh is passing to you guys. Somebody in the chat tell me who the listing agent is. Who is the listing agent? <clears throat> All right, I'm assuming we're having a count ticker on this though. What's that? I said, I'm assuming we're gonna have a ticker on this row, right? Like oh, I was about to sing the, uh, the do, 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 yeah, do, right. do, do. So Angelia says, uh, don't know, but the broker says Remax Southwest. All right. Uh, Cheryl says Remax. Okay, so we're good on the broker. So what I'm hearing you say is that there's no way for you to know who the listing agent is on this property. Is that fair? That is fair. So Nimesh, why is that a big deal? Uh, well, first, I mean, we know that people had a cow when the listing agent, I think, was originally on there. Um, and uh, honestly, I'll be, you know, all cards on the table. I don't, I don't exactly know why necessarily we removed it other than the fact that people were having a cow about it being on there. Let me ask you this, Namesh. I've worked really, really hard, right? Now let's flip it. You've worked really, really hard to make me into a client or at least someone that you have shared your app with. And you're like, Marty's going to buy a house with me someday. I just know it. I've been working on him. I'm, I'm emailing him every month. I'm calling him once a quarter. I'm sending him a text message. He finally comes around and says, yeah, I'm interested. Uh, send me what you got. And you send me your app. I download it. I start looking at it. All of a sudden, you send me a couple properties. I find the one and crickets. You never hear from me again. Why? Yeah, absolutely. You contacted the listing agent. Yeah. I get that. When they're not your they client. circumvented you and went directly to the listing agent. Absolutely. The apps that your consumers are using right now provide the listing agent's name. Many of them provide the email and phone number. Some of them, if they're lucky, even have multiple agents on there, right? The premier agents are listed on the app. If you are using the KW Consumer app with your clients, your clients have no choice but to click on the ask your agent button if they have a question. Now they can go to another app, let's be real, they can get online and do a search for the property address and find it on HAR or Zillow or somewhere else. However, it's a matter of friction. Right now, that would mean they would have to do an additional step or they could just click on ask your agent and all of a sudden you're gonna get an alert 
that they have a question on a, a specific property and that way you will get all that hard earned efforts back and they won't circumvent you, right? So definitely a, this isn't necessarily a selling point for the consumer per se, but it should be a selling point for you that you want your consumers using your app. So that way it's more difficult for them to attempt to circumvent you. You've done all the hard work. You deserve the reward of working them with them as a buyer's agent. So just one more reason why I love the consumer app because it only provides my information to the client and no one else's information. Next, you can see home details about this property. It's all being pulled from the MLS. So days on market, listing status, your build, house size, et cetera. We talked about commute times. So this is actually the commute times for, from this address. Now you can see, I can actually click on add a place. You can have up to three locations. So let's just say I'm buying this house as a uh, Southwest KW agent um, and I want to know how far is it from this house to the address. Who knows the address of the markets in our offhand? Namesh, do you know it? You want to do a Google search for me? What was that again? I apologize. I What's the up. address for the Southwest Market Center? Oh, 1650 Highway 6. And then it's suite one. Uh, sorry, uh, 350 if you really need it. 1650 Highway 6, Sugarland, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, perfect. So do you see now there is a third place listed under commute times? I now know that on average, now get it, I've driven down Highway 6 a whole lot, Siena to Katy, like for four years. So I know that traffic makes a big difference. And yet as a rule of thumb, on average, it would take a drive time of going from this property to your brokerage, it would take me 14 minutes. Now let's say I'm just some kind of cycle fitness nut and I wanna to bike to the office, it's a pretty day. It would take me 45 minutes from this specific listing to bike to the office. And if it was a really, really pretty day and I had nothing to do, or maybe my car broke down, I had to walk home from the office, God forbid, it would take me an hour and 57 minutes to do a walk from the property. And you guys can actually, and I'll show you in just a second, how the consumer or you, if you're using this app for yourself, can add the other two locations. So any consumer can have up to three, what we call places. And when those places are added, it will show them commute time via vehicle, bike, or walk, right? How many of you had a client before that says, um, I've had it before where it was like a, a, a couple and their mother lived with them. And they said, look, my mom doesn't drive. Like she just doesn't drive. So we need to be within walking distance of this church and with walking distance of a grocery store. Easy way for me to go ahead and put in, okay, what's the church address, right? And then let me look up, you know, um, grocery stores that are near that church, and hopefully we can find one that's an easy walking distance to both. This is a great tool that the consumer could use to figure that information out. I can see again the school information for this property. So this one's actually Austin Parkway, which has been around for a little while. So you can see there's the listing for the elementary school, Austin Parkway. First Colony Middle School at 94%, still pretty darn good. And then good old Elkins at 83. You can see this one actually does have a couple of private schools nearby. And so it's listing Primrose and Southminster. You can see there are no upcoming houses, open houses, excuse me, scheduled yet. We can also calculate a mortgage payment. I would just invite your consumer to use this with caution because it doesn't include interest and taxes. It's really just their kind of their payment, their base payment. Um, so and they probably still want to be working with the lender directly to get a much better idea of what the payment might be. You've got Keller Mortgage and Keller Covered one more time, and then activity for the home and nearby homes that are listed, and then of course marketing and legal information included on every single listing as well. Okay, at any point, again, if they have questions, they would just click on that Ask Your Agent button, and you're going to get an alert within command that they have questions on this specific listing. So that's the information included on an actual listing itself. Let me show you how to put in your places and also how to share the app from within the app. So I told you we could do both of those. I'm gonna click on more in the bottom right hand corner, the little person silhouette more in the bottom right. I'm gonna click on my account. So second option down, my account. And that gives me the third option down as places. Okay, so you can see places. And now you can see, uh, did I say that wrong? We want the client to contact, we do not want. Yeah, so Alina, Janet, Lynn, I wanna make sure when they click on ask your agent, they ask me. If, I, if they have my app, they ask the agent. 
comes directly to me. Um, so I can click the trash can. I was teaching this class for Laredo agents earlier. I can remove that one because that's a restaurant in Laredo. I can remove that one. That's a restaurant in Laredo. I can then click on add another place, right? And maybe it's, uh, who doesn't love that Whole Foods out there, right? So Whole Foods, oops, probably helps if you spell it right. And it starts pulling up Whole Foods locations. Um, and it is Whole Foods. Isn't that what it's called right there on the corner of six? Yeah, it's Whole Foods. Just put Sugarlander will probably pop up. There you go. There go. Whole Foods South of Market. That's why I didn't put it in Whole Foods Market. I can choose that and then now it's going to give me the drive time to there. Um, I could put in, I don't know, maybe I like to go to Astros games. I could put in the stadium address. I could put in Reliant Arena if I'm a rodeo fan, any of those types of things. You can put in any up to three places and then anytime they're in an, a listing or a neighborhood, they're going to see drive, bike, and walk time to each one of those properties that they are looking at. All right, any questions so far on search? Um, Imelda and Clifford, we're gonna get to that. You guys are thinking with your agent cap right now and we are gonna get into the agent portion soon. But right now, any questions, I'm gonna come back and answer those questions, so don't dismiss them, but I am gonna come back. Um, sharing the app. So if I am a consumer and I have, so maybe it's i am been searching all day long and finally I say, Nicole, I want you to check out this app. Marty shared this app with me, it's really cool. Now again, remember this is consumer to consumer sharing because again, this is a consumer app. We still have our consumer hat on. And if the consumer wanted to share it with a friend, family member, coworker, et cetera, they could click on share the KW app. And then you can see they can do the same thing with the property as they can with the app. And you just need to be aware that the verbiage is a little bit different because remember, it's the consumer sharing it with another consumer. I'm going to show you how to share the app as an agent in a second. Okay, so it says, I use the KW app to search for homes with my realtor, Marty Miller. Download it now. Guys, and you can change what this says. If you do want to use this link, you can from your consumer app to someone else and just change the text if you choose to. Okay, so it's basically six, one, half dozen. The one I'm about to show you allows you to share it from command. But if you wanted to actually go into the consumer app and share it with other consumers, you could. I would just make sure you change what this text said because this is a little awkward coming from you as an agent, right? So uh, what I do, what I do is I generally just delete the where it says my realtor and just change it to me. Yeah. So it says me, Namesh, Dave, blah blah blah. Yep. Perfect. So I use the KW app to search for homes with me. Oh, I wouldn't say I. I think I switched that too. I yeah. say use the KW app to search for homes with me in a mesh. There you go. Perfect. Yep. I love it. So take out the I and take out my realtor, Marty Miller, and just put in me. And there you go. You got the customized text. Great example. So great example. All right. So um, let's see. Guide. All right. So we've spent some time on search, bottom left hand button with the magnifying glass. We've spent some time in the more menu. Oh, one more thing. Let me show you in the more menu. How many of you have gone on a listing appointment? or a buyer showing and you get to the house and you're like, Ooh, I wish I really would have known that it backed to that or was next to that or didn't realize that the neighborhood kind of looked like this. I've gone on multiple when I was working for Tim, I did a ton of listing appointments and it only happened once where I showed up and didn't realize that the house park backed to a car wash that I said I will never go on another listing appointment again without looking to figure out what does this house back to. Because my CMA was completely off. I was telling them they could sell the house for 250, not realizing you back to a car wash. Of course, you're not going to get 250 for your house, right? So I used to use Google Earth. Put in the address, zoom in on the property, check out what's happening around it. Well, here's the good news, guys. We don't have to do that with our app. Remember, we have a partnership with Google. So if I click on more in the very top right-hand corner, click on more, you're going to see there's a second tab. We spent a lot of time in the listings tab when we were creating our filters for our saved search. If we click on that map tab, you'll see there's actually two options now. We've been on the default mode, meaning that's showing us the neighborhood names and the names of the streets and kind of showing us the street view. But I can click on satellite and then click on done. And boom, all of a sudden my view completely changes. Right, so I can start zooming in. Let's say I zoom in a little bit more and I zoom in a little bit more. 
If for any reason, this one right in the center of my screen is the property you intend to go on a listing appointment for, wouldn't it be nice to know that A, you've got power lines in the backyard or at least above the back fence, and B, you back to the feeder road or a major, right, a major freeway. Like, I think that might be a little bit difficult to sell that property, right? So if that's your listing, I apologize, you got a battle on your hands. You can use this view to look at the aerial of anything, right? So you can kind of zoom around and you can search for homes and you can zoom in and say, oh, well, that might be an interesting home to sell right there because it looks like it backs to either a community center or maybe that's an elementary school, can't quite tell. But you can see that this is a great way to kind of get an idea of what you're actually backing to or what's around you in the neighborhood. If they want to live on water, is that property on the water or across from the water? We all know we've seen that difference before as well. So again, that's under the more button in the top right hand corner. You can see the two tabs listing, excuse me, map versus listing. So I'm going to click on map and then I'm going to toggle it back to default. But if you want to see kind of the Google Earth view, if you will, you can click on satellite and it'll zoom you in on that view as well. All right, last thing I wanted to show you, how many of you are like me when you're walking, driving, biking, and you see a for sale sign? My wife and I, go, we go on walks pretty regularly with the girls and a new one pops up in the neighborhood. What's the first thing you guys do? It's the first thing you do. You don't even have plans to move. It's not even that cute of a house. Doesn't even look big enough for your family. And yet, what is the first thing that you do? Guys, if you're like me, you pull out your app because you want to know how much it's priced at, yeah, right? So you're just price. nosy, you're curious, because we're not unique in that. The consumer is just as nosy as we are. But how often do you have them call you and they're like, hey, we were in the neighborhood the other day and there's this house around the corner that's for sale. Could you tell me how much it's listed for? And you're like, sure, what street is it? And they're like, I don't really know. It's either on Fawn Lake, Fawn Lake Circle, Fawn Lake North Circle, on like South Shore Fountain, it's on one of those. You're like, how am I supposed to find that property, right? So you can train the consumer now, you see at the very top right hand corner, just below my battery button, there's an arrow cockeyed to the left. If you click on that arrow, it actually utilizes the GPS included in your phone and zooms in on your current location. So you can train your consumer to use this and just say, look, if you're driving through the neighborhoods, you're driving around town, heck, if you're on vacation, why do I know that I will never live in Napa Valley? Because every time I go to Napa Valley, I look at properties, I'm like, no wonder, I don't want a one one for $1.6 million, right? So your consumer can use this app anywhere they are in the US or Canada, click on current location and it will bring up property information about for sale properties around where they currently stand whether that's on the bike, whether they're walking, whether they're driving, a quick and easy way for them to see properties that are for sale around where they stand right at that moment, right? So we've talked about more now, we've talked about saved, where you can find saved collections, which are my kind of my file folders for all the properties I like, saved uh, searches, which have one or more of the different search criteria that I'm putting together for properties that I may want now, in the future, just information, right? If you had a, um, we have an investment property in Brno, right? I have a saved search set up around that property just so I kind of have an idea of properties that are going for sale in the area to get an idea of how our investment's doing versus other properties for sale. So those are all different kinds of searches that they could set up and then save them in their saved searches. So we spent some time in the save button. We've obviously spent a lot of time in the search. Feed is the second button over on the bottom there. Feed is a function of the KW Consumer app that's still being developed right now. It's going to tie directly to Command and the KW Mobile app, meaning the app that we're gonna use as agents. We will actually be able to communicate back and forth with our client between Command and their app and the KW Mobile app and the Consumer app. So these two and this one, it's all gonna happen within the feed. So it's there. They're not going to see anything right now because, again, we're still working on building out that connection. Finally, I want you to click on Guide. Button at the bottom, in the middle, Guide. What you're going to see there are two tabs. One is a buying guide. The other is a selling guide. As you start to scroll through, you can see as I'm in the buying guide, I start to get the steps 
of what it looks like to purchase a home. I can see I got to execute, then we do an inspection, I'm going to get some insurance and a home warranty, and then I'm going to close. And on the selling side, I can see first I show it, then I look at offers, they get a home inspection, we do an appraisal, then we're closed. First of all, remember, the consumer has this app. Whose app is it? It's their app, but who is it branded to? Who is this app branded to? Us, the agent. You, the agent, right? Yes. Janet, it's branded to you. Namesh, it's branded to you. So this guide is a buying guide for buying with who? Me, the agent. Yeah. You are telling them this is the process of going through the buying process with me. Guys, inadvertently, maybe even unknowingly, you are setting expectations for that client that you may not even know about. So this is your next piece of homework is to go through these guides. First off, go through them and read them. You can click on any one of these steps and you're going to get a detailed breakdown of what's happening within that actual step. Right? If there are things in this step that you don't do, take note of it. If there are things in this step that you do do, take note of it. If there are things in this step that you do that are, excuse me, things that you do that are not included in this step, you want to take note of that as well. Because guys, what I would hate to happen is you sit down at the closing table, the buyers or the sellers are frustrated and you can see it on their face and they start to talk and they're like, you know what, you told us all about this cool app you had. You said you would walk us through this guide. You said that you would do this. You told me we could expect this. You told me that this is what would happen and none of that happened. And now they're mad at you. You're like, whoa, Kimosabi, when did I say that? I never said any of that. And they're like, yes, you did. You said it right here in the guide portion of that app that you sent me. Oh, crap, right? So it's important that we know what's being said in each one of these guide steps so that you can make sure you're delivering on the steps of each one of the guides. Now, down below in Zoom, I told you you could raise your hand, right? That was one of the functions of the Zoom webinar. Let's do that now. Raise your hand if on the selling side, you believe that maybe there are more than five steps to the actual process. How many of you believe that there are probably more than five steps to the process? All right, so I've got five people, six people raising your hand. All right, slowly you guys are figuring out how to raise your hand. So here's the good news, guys. If you don't believe, if you believe there's only five steps and this is it, then read through the steps, make sure you understand, and you're good to go. However, I would challenge you. I would say that there are probably more than five actual selling steps. I would probably say there's more than 10 buying steps as well. So your homework is you're going through, you're reading the steps, and you're saying, how can I customize this so that it is a true representation of what it's like to buy with me and what it's like to sell with me? because you have the ability as the agent, we're about to take our consumer hat off and we're gonna put the agent hat back on, right? This is where we transition, right? You've told them this is what the steps are. And now all of a sudden you're realizing, Marty, those aren't the steps, it's not what I do, I don't do all of that, I do some other things, I have things that aren't even on here, how can I make it my own? Perfect, let's transition, okay? So I'm actually gonna stop this share, I'm gonna show you in command how we can start making our own guides relative to the business that we do. Hey, Marty, while you're transitioning there, um, I know we're doing this right after that command update. Um, so just FYI, if, so people don't get confused. Um, on the feed now, any, uh, any adjustments that we're making on the command side is actually showing up on the feed now. Oh, perfect. So it's not completely empty because I like what you're about to do and play um, from, from that little tagline that's up there right there that you see, right? Oh, you're all new KW app is here, blah, blah, blah. Um, so because of that, uh, the feed has updated a little bit. So I played with the, what you're about to actually show with the, with the guides and it's actually updated on my feed on my app. So awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah. So just so good news is, or like I said, slowly developing these parts out, right. Which is always exciting. Here's the other good news guys. You, you, this is the best time to be in this class because literally within the next, and I don't like to give you firm timelines, but let's just say within the next week or two. 
and it's probably a lot closer to the first than it is the last, God willing, we're gonna get a brand new app update and I'm gonna spend some time at the very end showing you some of the things that are gonna happen with that update, okay? So get excited about that. But right now we're talking about guides. How do I see the information included in the guides? How do I edit it? How do I remove a step, add a step, change a step? We're in KW command, okay? Agent.kw.com. I've logged into my command account. I'm going to come down to the second to last applet, which is called consumer. I'm going to click on that applet and it's going to open the consumer portion of command, right? There's three tabs at the top. You've got landing pages, agent site pages, and guide builder. I'm going to click on guide builder. Right now, there are only two guides available. There's a buyer's guide and there's a seller's guide, right? In the future, it's going to allow you to actually create additional guides. So easy example, what it's like to lease a house, what it's like to be a landlord, two easy guides to think about. But then I would take it one more step and say, well, what about being a luxury buyer versus being a first time home buyer versus being a commercial buyer versus land and ranch or farm and ranch, right? So you could actually customize each one of these guides and then ultimately you'll be able to assign that client, the guide that fits them best. So which buying guide works best, which one is the selling guide that works best, right? So right now we can only edit the two that are kind of pre-populated for us. So just like everything in command, if you want to edit one of the guides, you're going to come over to the pencil and click on the pencil. So this is the selling guide. We're going to click on the pencil. Now, just so you know, if the, if the consumer has not logged into their account, A, and B, paired it with an agent, then they're not going to see the guide, okay? So the guide will be empty if they haven't actually logged in and paired their app with an agent. This is the seller's guide. You can see here are the five steps that are included in the guide that we just looked at. If I wanna make any changes to any one of these steps, I can go ahead and click on the actual step itself. I have the ability to change the image. I have the ability to change the title and the subtitle. So this is kind of that little teaser text that I talked about, right? Then you can also see that when they click on each one of these cards, they get into what's called the workspace text or workspace details. This is where all of that detailed information was that you were scrolling through. Just for example, on the selling side, the listing side, I would say that before we've shown your home, and I imagine these are steps are detailed, but I would break it out. Personally, I would start with staging your home, and I would add a new step that says staging your home. And it would talk about the things that we can do to stage your home. If you don't provide a stager or recommend a stager, I'm sure you still have some examples like declutter, Crush your washer driveway, get fresh mulch, right? Clean out your gutters, change your air filters, make sure all your light bulbs work, you know, get the dogs and cats out of the house so that it starts to smell better, whatever it is, right? You all know your own staging opportunities. Then it might become prepare your, your home for photography and videography, right? My photographer always wanted all cars out of the driveway. He wanted to make sure that all the blinds were facing up because light on the ceiling make the room look bigger than light on the floor. Uh, wanted to make sure all of the light bulbs a worked and b were the same type and wattage because really nice cameras can pick up the difference in those and it looks bad on a chandelier or something similar if they don't all match so things like that make sure the ceiling fans are off if there's any water features make sure they're on etc so that's prepare your house for photography and videography it can be a step that's uh, preparing your house for the mls and that's you talking about I get the photos, then I describe them. I write a public description. I add all of your information from the MLS input form. Um, I add the link to our virtual tour, or whatever else that you're adding as a value add to the listing. That could be another step. And then you get to showing your home, right? We can't do any of those. First. We can't do showing your home until we've completed these first three steps. So you have the ability to customize that entire process. To add a step, like we talked about, you're gonna come down to the bottom and just click on add a step. And you can see you have the ability to put a title, subtitle, and image. And then once you've created the step, then you can click on it and change the workspace text from within the actual step itself. Once you add a step, by default, it adds below the closing step. So to move these steps around, 
you're just going to click on this little tab here on the left hand side with the six dots and you can see I can move them up and down kind of drag them around in that order so that's your ability to customize what your guide looks like guys if you don't want to add steps that's fine just make sure you understand what each one of the steps says so that you and your consumer are communicating and not inadvertently setting expectations that you can't deliver upon or won't or don't deliver upon, right? Make sure you know what the client has an expectation of. Um, yes, Michael, you can change the pictures just by clicking on the actual step. Like I said, you can change that image right there. When you are moving them through the steps, you're gonna do that from within opportunities, okay? So opportunities is our handshake icon here on the left-hand side. So if I click into opportunities, you'll see, first of all, a couple of things have to happen. You've got to make sure that A, your consumer has the app. I know that's duh, but sometimes you'd be amazed, right? So make sure that the consumer has downloaded the app. B, make sure that they registered using the email address that you have for them in your command database. I've had people say, well, they downloaded my app, they'll send me a picture of it branded, and they can't see what I'm about to show you in the next step, and it's because the emails weren't the same. So command has no way of knowing that they're connected to you in the consumer app. So you gotta make sure they're the same email address, okay? When they have downloaded the app, branded it to you and used the same email, when you're in their actual opportunity, so this is just a sample opportunity for a friend of mine named Elena, and she's helping me with this project, you can actually now come in to the opportunity itself. So I clicked on the opportunity and I can click on seller profile. This tab will let me know, A, are they actually connected to me? Are, we, are they registered and is that connection showing? You can see Elena is registered so I can see the connection. Next, you can see here's the guide. Here's where you're actually walking them through. When I showed you that guide, there was a little white circle and I don't know if you noticed it. If you get back on your app, you can see it. Next to each step is a white circle. As you start to click check off these steps, a check mark is going to start showing up next to their steps. So I can actually click on manage guide and then I can check off the inspection check. Let's just say we made it through repair negotiations and inspections and I can check that and then save changes. Say, yep, I want to save them. Now all of a sudden on Elena's app, she will start getting a little blue check mark next to the step of that guide that has been completed. Guys, this is an amazing selling point. When you're on the listing consult or the buyer consult and you're talking to your clients about why they should use a KW agent, leverage the app. Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, whoever they may be, right? With the buying or selling process, I know oftentimes you just wanna know where are we and what's next. Sometimes you don't necessarily even need to talk to me, you just wanna know where are we and what's next. When you use my consumer app, which is connected to me and our transaction, I will be constantly updating you with the steps that we have completed as we complete them. Now, of course, I'm gonna be reaching out in addition to, but if for some reason you wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning, you're just like, where are we and what's happening? I don't know, I'm so nervous, I'm so whatever. You can go onto the consumer app without having to worry about emailing me or calling me at two in the morning and see what steps have we checked off and which ones have we not. Will that other agent provide you that level of service in the palm of your hand, easily accessible on your phone? And they're not going to be able to, right? This is again, something that our app delivers. In addition, all those other cool search functions that we talked about. Now, when we get into the transaction, I can start checking off steps and they can see us doing that together, right? So that's how you manage the actual guide as you're walking through the steps with the consumer. Let's talk about sharing the app because that's the next most important thing. And then we're going to get to the updates that should be happening very soon. I'm going to answer those questions. Imelda and Clifford, I know you're like, when's you going to answer my question? I'm coming to it. Trust me. Okay. So uh, first of all, Clifford, let's go ahead and knock out yours. This is Elena, her listing. I can actually click on her contact record and go into contacts. And then I can see. So the question was, will we see what the client looks at? Well, first of all, here's the heads up. I just completed the inspection step and look what happened within Elena's contact record. It shows that I've completed that step. I can see that last week, Elena was looking at properties. I can click on any one of these property addresses and get taken immediately to a property page that will show me what she was looking at. 
Now this one's probably either off market or no longer available, but let's see. There we go. So here's property. I can scroll down and say, okay, what were you looking at? Now, here, Elena lives in Austin, so not always the best example. And I can see that Elena was looking at a small property there in Austin. Do you think our property values are jacked? I mean, look at this. It's a 2-1 in Austin and it costs $400,000. It's like crazy. Uh, but I can go through and say, okay, there's Santa Rita. She's looking at another small home. Again, 400,000. This one's a 3-2 with a thousand square feet. Crazy. Uh, Santa Maria. Here's another. This one's a 1-1 one -one listed at 325,000. So I can start to see what she is looking at on the app because it's connected to her contact record. Two schools of thoughts here, guys. You can either, when you share with them the app, tell them, here's another great thing. As you start to look at properties, I can see you viewing those properties as well, as well. So I can start getting familiar with what you're looking at. If you favorite a property, right? So Melda, this comes to answer your question. Um, if you favorite a property and create a collection, I can see that. I can see what's being added. I can even create a collection for you. And that's what you're going to do when you're under saved searches. This is actually where you're going to build that out for them. Okay, so you do have those opportunities. You don't want them. The other school of thought is to say, don't even talk about it. Don't tell them that you can see what they're doing. And then you give them the whole, hey, I was driving around the neighborhood and I saw a property you might like. Uh, it seems to fit all the criteria that we had. It's actually at 301 Robert T. Martinez Jr. Street. Oh my gosh, I was on your app this morning and I actually saw that property too. It's one I want to see. You're like, wow, what a coincidence. Imagine that. Would you like to see it tonight or tomorrow? Okay, so you can play dumb and don't tell them you know, but then don't tell them you know, or you can tell them you know. Here's my advice. Don't do the middle ground, okay? Don't call Elena and say, hey, it looks like yesterday at 630, 629, and 632, you were on your app looking at properties because then you run the risk of freaking them out, right? There are people that will be like, how did you know, why are you, are you in my phone? What are you doing, right? And you're really gonna make them nervous. So either tell them in advance, you can see what they're doing or don't tell them at all and play stupid, but don't not tell them and then call them all of a sudden and be like, I can see everything you're doing because then they get real nervous and they're like, well, what else can you see? And are you in my phone? And oh my gosh, my credit card got hacked and now you stole my number or whatever, right? You don't wanna go over that. So those are the two schools of thoughts that you can do with regards to actually seeing what the consumer is doing. Getting the app out. How do I get people to download my app? We're going to go through three different methods. Okay, the first method is just the manual method of actually sharing your link. So I'm going to come back to the consumer tab and pull up that applet. And then I'm going to go into sites and app settings. Everyone see it on the far right hand corner here, site and app settings. If I click on that button, you'll see I get four tabs. A fifth tab will be coming soon within the next couple of weeks, which will be featured listings. We'll talk about that in just a second. So if this page looks a little different next time you're here, it's most likely because it has the featured listings tab. We'll talk about it in just a second. But for right now, I'm going to click on URLs. And then you can see app URL. This is my actual link. If I send this to someone and they actually go to that page, this is where they're going to be taken, right? And you can see it's got my name here. This is my app link, my download link. They can actually come in and if they're on their mobile device or tablet, they can click on one of these and actually download it from their device or tablet. If not, they can actually put in their phone number and it will send them a link via text to their phone if they're on a desktop or a laptop, and then they can download the app from that link that just got sent to their phone. Okay, so each one of these is agent specific and it is cap sensitive, meaning that this all has to be lowercase, this all has to be uppercase. It's easy just to copy it, but if for any reason you're typing it in, make sure that it is case sensitive, I said cap sensitive, case sensitive meaning that lower on the front half, upper on the back half. The text code, guys, it's not working right and they're getting rid of it, okay? They've done everything that they can to troubleshoot it and for some reason, there are just some really bad intermittent issues with regards to the app text code. So they are eliminating that feature of sharing your app with consumers, okay? So my advice is stop using that. Don't ask anyone to text anything. Just actually give them the full link 
so that they can click on it and then be taken there. So if your email signatures have the text code, get rid of them. If for anything under social media, et cetera, I would get rid of the text code and just have your specific app URL so people can click on or type in that URL and go to your specific landing page for your version of the app, okay? So I can copy this and send it out in an email. I can send it out in a Facebook message. If I'm texting from my computer, right, all the different options, I can just manually send this URL. That's option number one to get my app shared with my consumers. Option number two, I can actually utilize Keller Williams Command, Keller Williams Command Smart Plans. So if you come up to the fourth icon down, this is the Smart Plan applet. If you've never been in here, you're gonna have no Smart Plans in your personal library. If you spent any amount of time in here, you may have added one, two, three, 10, et cetera. And yet, if you don't see my Promote My App Smart Plan here, it means that it's still in the library and you have not added it yet to your Smart Plans. So you wanna click on Library in that case. And then you're looking for promote my app. I believe these are all laid out in the same way. So they should all be top left, promote my app. This is how it should show on your screen as well. On any of these smart plans, including promote my app, if you click on view steps, you'll get a breakdown of what the smart plan actually does. So you'll see that the first thing this one does is sends an email. Okay, it actually sends an email and then it waits a day delay. And the email looks very similar to this page, right? It has all the information. They can come in and actually, you know, download the app or get the link sent to them. Then it's gonna wait a day. If you have Twilio, which is the texting program that is kind of built into command, now it's not free, right? So let's talk about Twilio for a split second. Um, it is a paid for program that connects with KW Command and will send texts out on your behalf from your business text line, which you have purchased, okay? So I wanna make sure you're clear on that, is not sending texts from your personal phone number. It is sending them from a business text line, which you purchase when you register for Twilio. You're literally purchasing a number that you can then send texts to and receive texts from. The way I always explain it to my clients is, hey, it's really important to make sure that any text communication that you and I have regarding your very expensive real estate transaction are stored in a safe place, number one. Number two, that I can easily access them anywhere I'm at. And number three, that they don't ever get mixed up in my personal texts from things like, honey, will you please pick up bread and eggs on the way home, right? And so I've actually purchased an additional piece of technology for our use. When I send you texts from this number, uh, it may look different. It's not my cell phone number. If you ever need me, please dial me direct on my personal cell. Otherwise, this is the way that we can keep our, our business conversations via text, um, basically private and secure, okay? So that's what Twilio is all about. You can connect Twilio from within your settings menu. I know Namesh can walk you through that, or Norman, or whoever it is at your market center working you through that. Um, it is $20 to register. The texts are less than a penny each. So literally, it's about, you can send almost 3,000 text messages for that $20. Okay, they're literally seven tenths of one penny. Um, so once you got Twilio connected, it'll fire this text right here, and then it's gonna wait three more days, and then it's going to fire this text right here. So you can see as I hover over these texts, that's what the texts say. If you'd like to add this smart plan to your library, you're gonna click on add smart plan. It will then show up underneath my smart plans and you can see it here. Now here's the reality guys, the developers are writing what these texts are going to say. And you may not text like that. So you can always scroll over as long as the pencil is not grayed out. You see how this one's grayed out? And I get that little red X. You can't change the quarterly call plan. It's only one step anyway, right? You can change the promote my app. So if I click on this pencil, I can actually come in and change what each one of these texts say. So you can see here's what the text says. I can tell you, uh, I'm the uh, son of a elementary educator and uh, my mom was a principal, I mean, excuse me, a librarian and a teacher. My dad was a principal, 26 years, um, Barrington Place Elementary. If anyone went to Barrington Place, I don't know if you all did, but that was my dad, John Miller. Um, so I can tell you this sentence doesn't have a question mark in your world. It actually says a period. So I've made edits to this text that has the actual question. It actually personalizes their contact first name, which I can pull over here. These are called merge fields. 
and I can add these merge fields information into this box, right? And edit what the text messages, each one of them say. Okay, so you have that ability. Once you're done making your edits, you would just click on save. And now the text changes will start going out to anyone else that needs to get added to the plan. Step number two, add them to the Promote My App Smart Plan. Last step, utilize social media. So I can click on campaigns. And from within the settings menu, if you've not already, you're gonna to wanna to connect your Facebook page and or your Facebook profile and your Twitter profile. Okay, so there are two different, four different settings within the settings menu. Um, and you can connect your Facebook and your Twitter so that command can actually post on your behalf to one or more of your business pages that you have connected, right? The way that that happens is I can click on social posts and on the right hand side here, you're gonna see what we call quick posts. I have a lot of people that tell me, Marty, I'm just not good with Facebook. I'm not a marketing pro. I can't create anything that looks good. I say, cool, no worries, command's got me, okay? Let's scroll down and you're gonna see social posts here. Here are two posts that I've already been created for you. It's got the professional image, branding, information. All I have to do is click on one of these two arrows and it's gonna pull up that post for me. It's gonna say, here's the text that we recommend. And if you don't like that text, you can choose to shuffle it. And it'll give you a new version of the recommended text. Or guys, you can come in here and type anything you want and actually change the text yourself. And next, you can see that a photo has already been uploaded, professionally designed by the KW marketing team. You see your DBA logo is already included. And I can come down and say, all right, do I want to publish this right now? Or do I want to schedule this for the future? I can click on schedule post in the calendar and then scroll down a little bit more. And you can see, let's say I want this to go out next, uh, let's say Monday the 18th at 9 a.m. I want this to go out on my Facebook and my Twitter. So you can see here's my Facebook business page and my Twitter account. So I'm gonna check on Twitter and then I'm gonna click on schedule post. It'll give you a preview saying, here's what it looks like on Facebook. Here's what it's gonna look like on Twitter. I'm gonna click on schedule post. Now all of a sudden I have this post with the wording that was at the top there being scheduled for May 18th for my Facebook and Twitter accounts. Now I've got this second one that's here. Let me go ahead and schedule that one. So I can click on that arrow. I can say, yeah, that wording looks good. I like that image. This all looks good. I'm going to schedule this one. The first one went out on the 18th. Let's have this one go out the Wednesday following 9 a.m. And yep, I want that to go out on Facebook and Twitter as well. I can click on schedule post. I now have a professional looking photo and a professional looking description going out on my business, Twitter and Facebook pages. That's two posts in one week done in two minutes, right? Uh, Angel and I'm saying it wrong. Angela, Angelia, Angelia? I hope that's how you Angela, say it. Angela, it's just Angela. Angela, sorry, Angela. Uh, no, this is just social posts. You can create ads for your app, but this is just showing you how to do it for free, okay? There's no way to, from this social post page to change it into an app. Now, you'll see there are two of them here, and maybe you're like, well, I don't like those. I've already posted those. This is all we have. Nope. I can click on shuffle, two brand new posts, different from the first two. Click on it again, two new posts. Shuffle again, right? You can see it just keeps bringing in. I think there's about 10 or 12 that it's going to shuffle through. Now, I'm looking for this black screen. And some of you are thinking, why would you post just a black box to your page? That's not very good. This is actually not a black box. It's actually the video from Family Reunion about your consumer app. I'll click on play so you can see a few seconds of it. So you can see professionally created, professionally designed, and all I have to do to get this one to go out is click on the arrow. It's got the video already uploaded. It's got some recommended text, which you can change if you choose to. And then it defaults on the videos to publish immediately, but I can say, nope, I wanna schedule it. 
And this time, let's have that one go out on the Friday morning, so I'm consistent. They all go at 9 a.m. I want it out on Twitter as well. And I can click on Schedule Post and Preview Facebook, Preview Twitter, Schedule the Post. That quick and easy, I just created three separate posts. One's going out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And all three of them are going out on my Facebook business page and my Twitter account. And they all talk about the consumer app. Anytime anyone clicks on the link in any one of these six posts, they're going to get immediately taken to this page where they can download my app automatically branded to me. They don't have to go through the branding process automatically downloaded. Okay. So that's the really exciting things that are happening both within KW and the consumer app. Now, right now, the items that you can see within the KW contact record are a little bit limited, but we're making some changes. And like I said, no better time to have this class come out because it's happening very soon. Um, the things that you're going to be able to see start to occur. Right now, you can just see when they viewed an image or viewed a, a, a property, viewed a listing is what I'm looking for. Pretty soon, you're gonna be able to see their actual search activity. So you will be able to see that I searched for four plus bedroom, three plus bathroom, 250 to three point, whatever my price, right? What are the actual filters they're searching for? You can see when they have viewed a neighborhood. You can see when they have created or edited a collection and what properties they have added to those collections. You can already see viewed listings. You can already see guide builder step completion. But the big ones really are going to be the fact that we can start to see the actual criteria that they're putting in and the collections, including obviously their favorites. So you'll see the properties getting added to any collection called favorites. Any collection they're going through the process of creating is probably important to keep track of. Next cool thing that's happening when the app release comes out is the ability to have featured listings. This is both on the consumer app and on your, your agent website. So you'll see this is that fifth tab, excuse me, that I was telling you about. And it's gonna be underneath the consumer applet. It's gonna be called featured listings. And you can see, you can change what the headline says, and then you can go in and select up to 12 of your listings. Real quick caveat, does not update. So if you choose 12 hot listings that you have, and three weeks from now, all 12 of those are under contract or sold, and someone comes to your app or your site, they're gonna see 12 properties that are all either under contract or sold. So you do have to stay up with it. If you want to keep fresh listings available as your featured listings, you've gotta make sure you keep up with adding them and removing them as they go under contract or sold. You can leave them on there if you want, it's up to you. Um, but they will display on the consumer app as a default collection. So when they look at their collections, they're gonna see their favorites and then your featured. And then on the site, you'll see the big button that's at the box that says uh, search here. I think it says something like that. Right underneath that box where they would type in their address or location, they will, you will have the ability to add those featured listings. Now, if you don't have any listings or you choose not to feature any listings, that's okay. The consumer doesn't know any different. Okay, it's not like it's gonna say featured listings and there's nothing there. So as I understand, if you choose to use it, it's added. If you don't, it's not. Consumer won't know any difference. The next cool thing that's happening with the consumer app with the next update is the ability to actually request a tour. So they can schedule a tour from within the app. At the bottom, you've seen this Ask Agent button. This was at the bottom of the listings we were looking at. Pretty soon, you'll have the ability to request a tour by clicking on Schedule Tour. Once you do that, they'll have three options to choose what date and time of day that they're looking for, right? Whether that's morning, afternoon, or evening. And then they can decide whether they want an in-person tour, right? Actually schedule a showing, or would they prefer live video? Obviously with everything that's happening with COVID, um, a lot of times people don't feel comfortable meeting you, but they still wanna see property. Um, if that property is available for a showing, then you could actually go to the home, set up that showing, and then via virtual, right, live video, you're using Zoom, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, Facebook, Google, whatever the method is that you and the client agree upon, then you can show them the property that way. The request is actually going to come into your KW command. It's going to look like this in the contact record. So you can see that the contact requested a video tour. Here's the address. So you can view the listing or you can view the actual request. 
And then you can see here's what the time frames actually look like. So they want to see a particular listing. Here's the days and times of days. Here's the platforms they prefer. Now you're going to have to set this up with them outside of the app. So whether that's a call, a text message, or an email saying, hey, um, I've got Zoom. Do you have Zoom? Yeah, we both have Zoom. Cool. We'll do that. Uh, I'll go to the house and I'll Zoom you and we'll make it happen, right? Or Messenger or FaceTime or whatever it is that you two agree upon. So that's a cool new addition that's going to be happening within the actual app. Uh, the next one, which I don't know if that's happening with this release or future release, but as I told you, you would have the ability to actually create your own custom guides within the guide builder where you'll have more than just two. You could then decide which two are my defaults and when do I want to assign a different guide to a particular buyer or a particular seller. So those are cool updates that are coming within the KW Consumer app here in the future, which is pretty exciting stuff. So let's get back into that, there we go. All right guys, so we've talked about the consumer app wearing our consumer hat, if you will, right? We talked about how to search by landmarks, how to search by neighborhood, how to search by current location, how to put in just a general search criteria, how to view the listing from the Google Earth view, if you will, and how to view it from the standard view how to create a collection and save properties to it, how to have an actual saved search so they can come back to that search every time they're on the app, right? We talked about the guide, what it means for you, what it means for them, and your ability to make sure you're on the same page by making edits to that guide. And then we've talked about how KW Command connects to the consumer app and how you're gonna to start to see even more interaction between those two platforms. So, um, if anyone has questions, I'd love to answer those now. Like I said, this is being recorded. If you got on late, you missed the first half or whatever, I'll send the link out. It'll be a YouTube link from my YouTube channel uh, to your leadership team so they can then share that with you. So if anyone has questions, we can knock those out now. And if not, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. And as always, look forward to seeing you guys Q3 once all this madness settles down, assuming that the baby's not here yet. So we'll see how that plays out for you. Uh, let me start it out, Marty, actually, because we got a couple of questions on it. And before I even try to figure that out, if you just happen to know, I guess a couple of agents were saying that uh, when they were trying to follow along with you uh, with by landmark, uh -huh. uh, it wasn't popping up for them. So do you think it's a setting or something or? Um, I think that's going to be a case by case. I don't know which landmark they were searching for and, and how they were typing that in. Um, and yet I have not seen any issues with that as long as it's being done the way that I was doing it. So um, it may be a update issue, meaning that they still have an older version of the app. So, um, you know, we'd have to take a look at that individually offline. Okay. Jack is saying that he tried each one of the ones that you, tr that you did live. Yeah. I will get with Jack and make sure he's got the most. Sure. Of course. And then maybe do a Zoom where he can share his, his phone with you and then sure. see. Yeah, absolutely. Like right together. Yeah, sounds great. Sure. That was the plan. Thanks. Uh, if anybody else got anything, uh, just either raise your hand or uh, ask in the Q&A before he, Marty, uh, shuts it down. Uh, I got on the app and it says, find an agent. But then as I got further into it, it says my name. Uh, Cheryl, I'm not sure I understand. Did you choose yourself as an agent and then therefore it was branded from there? Maybe you followed your own link. You're welcome, Armin. And you're welcome, Lynn. Uh, Denise, is the app automatically updated? If by automatically updated, you mean that the listings are showing up automatically? Yes. All right, so the KWLS system feeds into the app. Um, I don't know the time frame, so I have seen a couple of issues where you know it takes maybe I don't know 24 hours or whatever it may be for those uh, showing set or those properties to show up. Do remember, I was walking yesterday with my wife and we saw a listing that I had not seen before, and I pulled it up on the app and it didn't show up, and I was like, oh, well, that sucks. Here's a I can clearly see it's for sale and it's not showing up on the app. Well, what I didn't realize and transparency, I then pulled up HAR to see, well, will it show on HAR? And it did, and yet it was pending already. And so the reason it wasn't showing up on my KW app was, remember, it defaults to active properties. So the reason I couldn't see it on the consumer app was that it was already pending, 
and my default setting was to only show me active listings. So I've had that happen before where people are like, I can't find this listing. And because it's pending, it doesn't actually show up. Well, guys, you've got one of the most comprehensive tech teams there at your market center, obviously with the mesh and Norman and the entire team there. So if you do have any additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out. They can walk you through this amazing app and its interaction with you guys. Like I said, I'll be sending this link for this video over and uh, we'll get it, uh, get it all taken care of for you guys so you can read through it. So as always, it's always a pleasure working with you and training you. Hope you have a fantastic rest of the week and uh, we'll see you in Q3, if not before. All right, guys, take care. Have a great week. All right. Already appreciate it, buddy. We'll talk to you uh, at the end of the week, bud. Absolutely. Sounds good. Take care. Bye.